Thank you, Sadiq, for taking this interview for British Bell. It's an absolute pleasure. Welcome to City <laughs> Hall as one of London's most uh, famous uh, daughters. Oh, my God. Um, nervous, Nana. No, no. um, I know you were both from South London. We are. And we're born in the same year. We are. What was your childhood like? I don't pretend, you know, life was perfect, but actually I've got really fond memories of growing up. My dad was a, a bus driver. We grew up seeing mum working hard, dad working hard, and so we had a work ethic growing up, understand that actually, you know, my parents had, you know, le left their home in Pakistan to come to London. Really difficult for them to do so because they wanted a better life for themselves yes. and their kids. And, and, you know, we needed to work hard at school, listen to the teachers and make sure that we, you know, Got benefit as much from... as you could. Yeah. And you know, it's like... It's you, the same, a similar story. It's a common yeah. story when we were growing up and you know this, you know, children of immigrants, you work hard, you get a help in hand and you can achieve anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, I like to think that's the London story and one of my frustrations is that there are too many uh, Londoners today missing out on what we had, which is the, the work, work ethic, work ethic plus help in hand, you can achieve Agreed. anything. Agreed, 100%. It wasn't uncommon for people to use, you know, the N-word uh, or the, the P-word. Uh, and, you know, and, and so the basic rule we had growing up was that was unacceptable. If somebody used the N-word or the P-word, there'd be a fight because you couldn't allow people to get away with that. And mm -hmm. the great thing was, there was a sense of solidarity. You'd have white friends and, and yes. you know, African-Caribbean heritage friends all sticking up for someone like me who was called mm -hmm. the P-word. Similarly, if one of our mates was called the N-word, yeah. you'd stick up for them. And that sense of solidarity is what you know, being in London is all about. I remember when I was five, a little boy with red hair called me N-word. And I thought, I'm at five, I'm like, I'm not gonna, I know this is wrong, I'm yeah. not gonna accept this. And I fought back. And what's heartbreaking is, I mean, we've, made, we've made so much progress. So in the last 20 years, for example, words that were used uh, not uncommonly have disappeared. And the heartbreaking thing is, Replaced. particularly post-Brexit, it's sort of come back at a... What does people think that Brexit is a, a, a race thing, where it's like I think a what's divi divide of cultures? Is that what they think? I think what's happened is people voted to leave the EU all sorts of complicated reasons and um, it could be your unhappiness about housing or health care or inverted commas foreigners immigration they're nicking your jobs and it's given people the wrong impression that somehow is acceptable now it's not acceptable these words, and it's not and it's that's why not. it's really important it's not and acceptable so, anywhere yeah. in the world and, uh, you know what and actually people are far more intelligent than politicians give them credit for when you explain to people look if for example tomorrow all the EU citizens were to leave London. We wouldn't be able to build the homes we need. We wouldn't be able to have a good NHS that we've got. Uh, fashion sector would crash. Yep. Tech sector would uh, crash. Some of the uh, key staff in the FTSE 100 would have to uh, leave. Our, our economy would, would be decimated. So I read that you joined the Labour Party in 1985. I did. Which I think that was the first year I did my first model assignment. I joined because I was, ang I was an angry young man. I mean, a young boy. I mean, I saw... My friend's big brother's been routinely stopped and searched by the police. I saw on the TV, you know, the miners being on strike, and I thought, you mm. know, it's no point in just being angry. That's not really constructive. What can I do? And rather naively and sort of romantically, I thought, let me join the Labour Party because there was a Conservative government. Uh, Mrs. Thatcher was the Prime Minister, yeah. and what's the opposition to the bad guys? And the opposition to the bad guys was the Labour Party. So I joined the Labour Party. We weren't a political family, but we talked about politics at home in the sense of what's going on at my dad's work, uh, people being harassed by the police. And so that's how I learned my politics through life. Just seeing what was going on around yeah, you. Yeah, talking about it. You're a Muslim. Has it been easy or has it made things more complicated? But I've never run away from the fact that I'm a Muslim. I try and be a good Muslim, but, but I'm, not, I'm not a Muslim politician. I'm a politician who happens to be a Muslim. I'm not just the mayor for Londoners who are Muslim. I'm everyone's mayor. Everyone's mayor. And one of the things I've tried to do is be everyone's mayor. But I recognise um, that actually there are men and women around the world doing really bad, horrible, evil things, used in the name of Islam to justify their terrorist criminal actions. I've got to accept that, and I do accept that. I don't feel I'm in any way responsible for that. No. What I can do, though, is somebody who is in a position of power and influence. Just remind people what, what actually the vast, vast, vast majority of Muslims are about. Do you remember, do you ever take the buses and trains when you had to get off of the IRA threat? I know, that's the thing. The IRA did you know, have a bomb in Hyde Park and 
there'd be the bomb alerts. You remember they removed the bins from the tube? Oh, because yeah. Of, you know, that's, I mean, that's, there, it was like every week. Uh, and it became like you just get off the train, yeah. wait on the platform. We're a very stoic city. I mean, we just get on with things and we, and we actually, you know, see the best in people and we recognise, you know, and actually, you know, the Irish community in the 80s and 90s was demonised. You know, some people you know, wrongly assume, you know, all Irish people must be terrorists and stuff. Yeah. And so when you speak to friends who are of Irish descent, they were discriminated against. So it's heartbreaking to me as somebody who has seen the contribution made to our city and our country and to the West generally by, uh, you know, people of the Islamic faith, for that somehow to be denigrated by, you know, people saying somehow all of Islam is to blame or all Muslims should be, uh, you know, viewed under suspicion because that's not, that's not the case. And you, the reason why you've got to be careful is this. If you look at some of the stuff that, you know, uh, so-called ISIS or Daesh are saying, what these terrorists say is that the West and Islam are incompatible and the West are the bogeymen, the West are evil. Look, I'm the West. I'm a Westerner and I'm also a Muslim. Yes. And so we've got to tackle that. But also what we don't want is people in the West saying the same stuff as they're saying, that somehow you can't yeah, yeah. be an American and a Muslim, you can't be a Brit and a Muslim. But how, you do, you can't do, be... how do you do that? Do you educate from school, in school? How do, you, how, do you, I mean, how do you get that out there? I think all of us have a responsibility, whether you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim, to actually say it as it is and to say, actually, you know what, that's not my experience of uh, a Muslim. And that's why we've got to make sure we tackle this. And I recognise, I'm not, I'm not naive, I recognise that actually one of the reasons uh, why you know, the world's media was interested by you know, my election was because you know, here you have in what is arguably, in my view, definitely the greatest city in the world, Londoners choosing me to be their mayor. And that yeah. demonstrates that actually hope can overcome yes, fear. absolutely. That shows that you know, unity can overcome a division. And that demonstrates you know, we as a city are, in my view, a beacon for the rest of the world. You've assumed power at this critical time right now with terrorism and uncertainty. There, there, there is no... There is no sugarcoating this, 2017 has been a tough year for London with uh, the, the Westminster attack, mm -hmm. the London Bridge Borough Market attack, the awful tragedy at Grenfell Tower. These are things we've got to deal with. We are a global city that's shown in the past our resilience. Yes. We talked about our experience growing up in the 80s with the uh, IRA. IRA. What we aren't going to do is be cowed by the bad guys. We're going to bounce back. And you know, that, that's the London that I know and love. You know, there's a great, there's a great quote from one of my favourite authors, Sadie Smith. Sadie Smith said... Who's working for us. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, congratulations yeah, to Edward. Well done. Well done. Uh, so look, Sadie's got this lovely quote, which I, which I love. She said, London is a state of mind. And it's, it's just who we are. We're open-minded, outward-looking. The phrase I use is, the great thing about London is, if you're different, you aren't simply tolerated. You're respected, celebrated, and embraced. You don't want to be tolerated. You're tolerated too thick. You want to be embraced celebrated and respected. And that's the London that we know, and it's a state of mind. And so, look, I'm confident. We've had a tough, tough uh, 2017, mm -hmm. but I've, I'm so confident about our future. And as far as, you know, the LGBT plus community is concerned, you know, I think it's, it's a source of embarrassment that I'm the first ever mayor to walk with pride uh, at the Pride event in uh, London last year and uh, this year. God bless year. you. And it's really important it's, to it make... It is very... It is embarrassing. By the way, it's great the progress uh, Vogue is making on social media. I think Edward's already started stuff, you know, the Snapchat stuff is great. You've got it's to, great. It's about getting the next generation of readership and yes. stuff, and so... And it's really important. Well, it's the whole... It's what culture is today. It's like... Everyone wants to feel that they're involved. They need to feel like they're involved. They're adding their part. They're being listened to. Yeah. It's important. And last question. Would you like to be Prime Minister? No. I've got Why the greatest not? job in the world. Why not? I want you to be no, our Prime Minister. Listen, I mean, I'm the mayor of the greatest city in the world. I get to meet great people. Um, I get to do great stuff. And I'm making a tangible difference, I hope, to the lives of ordinary Londoners. And, uh, you know, as long as... But you don't have to... There's no time limit, right? There's no time limit. So we can have you for forever. Well, as long as Londoners keep on supporting me, I'll carry on being the mayor. I don't think you have a problem there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Nice meeting you. Take care.